for joining me today as we create our own envelopes. In card making, this can save you a ton of space, and when we have different shaped cards, we can make them fit and not look awkward. So all we're going to need is some 8.5 by 11 paper or 12 by 12 paper. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Jen Lee, and this is my Gentastic journey, including card crafting. Okay, so today we're going to use A7 card sizes, which is 5 by 7, and then we're also going to use A2, which is 4 and a quarter by five and a half. So first we're going to use a 12 by 12 inch cardstock pack and I get this from honestly my grocery store Myers in the United States. It has a bunch of really pretty colors, stuff I might not normally use for card making but they make gorgeous envelopes. So I picked one out that I thought matched this card that I'm going to use and you can see here I've got my two card bases a2 and A7 and I'm going to first show you how to use this with a tool and this tool is very inexpensive. I'll put the price here. I got it off of Timu website just because I wanted to try it out but I didn't want to spend a lot of money and you can see here it's got all the different card sizes and then it tells you the paper size and the scale mark at the far left of the machine. So first, first we've got an A2 and an A7. So we're going to start the A7 here is shown in the very bottom in the dark black with the white writing and it's a 10 by 10 inch paper size. You'll need a ruler and then a scoring pen that came with the machine. So first I'm going to use my Fiskars paper trimmer and we're going to cut this to 10 by 10. This is for the A7 card. It suggested that we cut it at 10 by 10 square. Make sure that when you're using a paper trimmer to push that down with your thumb, other, otherwise your paper can move. I always forget, but <laughs> it's a good reminder. Okay, so here is my card base. And this is actually a, sc a scoring board on the back side. And then it's got some details. I thought the instructions were pretty good on how to make it. You're going to score it once at the score scale mark that it indicates on the far right there. And then you're just going to keep moving it into a circle and get all the scoring all the way around. So because we started with the A7 card, the score line is at 4 and 3 eighths. So you're just going to want to score that right there and it's called a scale mark on the far left but then we'll make our score and then we line up our score mark with that little indicator there so it should make a full line together and then you're going to make the next score line and they have a nice little notch at the top. This is very easy to use. I was very impressed with how easy it was to use and you're going to just keep turning it right and you want to just get all four sides to have a score and you're always going to use that score mark that, that you continue to make. So you only use that scale mark one time for that very first score. The rest of the time you're going to just be turning it and using the prior score mark to make your next score line. And this is our last one and we should have them all completed. And you can see there that I have all four of them. It's a big rectangle. And I'm putting my card base in there just to show you how it matches lots of space around it. So you're not going to run out of space. They've got these little corners and it's good to cut those out. Otherwise it just leaves bulk in your envelope. So you want to cut out each one of those notches. If you don't, you can fold them in, but it does leave a lot of bulk and it you can tell that you made the envelope, which isn't a bad thing, but it's just, I guess, personal preference. So this one, I'm putting the design on the outside of the envelope, and I'm just folding it all in. So you can see most people like to cut that top notch out. So I'm making a couple little marks so I can use my larger Tim Holtz scissors, and I'm just going to cut that where I put those two little marks. And then when you line that back up, with the folds it'll look nice and clean. I'm using double-sided tape that I get off of Amazon. I will link everything in the description box below. You just want to click on more to see those. I'm using my sticky scissors. I keep one set of scissors for sticky stuff so that I don't ruin my, my nice Tim Holtz scissors. These are just regular old scissors. I don't even know the brand of these. And then I'm just going to be putting this double-sided tape on the back. You can use glue too. I just find this to make it 
just a little bit sturdier and then you don't have any waving. And then we'll take that tape off and just press that down. Now, a lot of people like, like to round that top piece of the envelope, so I just use my punch and now it's nice and rounded. But sometimes I leave it just a triangle and sometimes I leave it rounded. So there you go. And you can put a big label there if you wanted to put this in the mail. This one's going to be hand delivered, so it's fine. Next, we're going to make the next size, which is our A2 card size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And the scale mark is at three and a half. So it's a little bit higher there. Again, you're going to make this one score mark and then you're going to use the rest of them at the top there. So I'm going to make this go a little bit faster, cutting out some of the parts, just because you guys saw me do this last time, but I'm just turning it, turning it, turning it till we have all four big box there. And then I, I wrote these in because I didn't think you could see it before, but these are the notches I'm going to cut out. So I just wanted you to be able to see those. I'm taking my small Tim Holtz scissors. These are my fussy cutting scissors but they are easy to use. They're easy to hold in my hand. I love them. And this time we're going to leave the print on the inside of the envelope instead of the outside of the envelope. And that way you can put this in the mail a lot more easier and then it looks pretty when someone opens a card and sees the envelope all pretty like that. I do it both ways. It just depends if I'm putting it in the mail or not putting it in the mail. And I'm using a smaller, a thinner double-sided tape here because this one didn't have as much room to play with, so just kind of use your judgment there. You can always cut your tape in half if you only have the thicker double-sided tape. I also like this thinner tape to put at the top of the envelope. And again, that's a big square, so those are our two sizes from our little scoring tool here. Next, I'm going to show you my preferred method, which includes no tools. And it's a lot easier in my opinion and it also fits the envelope a little bit more. And all I do is I take the size, the first size of the envelope, so four and a quarter, and I multiply it by two. And that's how I came up with eight and a half. Because this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, I'm showing you here that I don't need to cut it. And then you're gonna wanna find your center. And you can do this a couple ways. You can use a measuring tool to measure out four and a quarter, or four and a quarter, and then find the center. You can also just bend it each of the corners in. I'm double checking that my math worked because I always do because sometimes I just, I don't know, I have a brain fart and I do it wrong. Here is where the difference is. So I can actually fold this a little bit higher so there's not so much excess envelope that you get when you use that little scoring tool that I showed in the first two examples. Again, I'm going to cut the notches out and I'm just using copy paper here to show you this envelope. You can always embellish this by, if you just wanna use copy paper, then you can put some pretty design paper on the inside. So I just wanted to show you what that looked like. And then here again, you're gonna to wanna to cut that notch off in most cases. You don't have to, it's just definitely personal preference. It just finishes it off kind of nice. Again, we're gonna put the double-sided tape on here. Especially with the copy paper, I think the double-sided tape is nice. It's very, very sticky and it's not going to make your paper look wobbly, wrinkly, whatever you want to call it. And see, it just fits just quite a bit nicer than the tool that I used. And then for the next one, I'm going to make an A7 using my same preferred method. So this is a five by seven inch paper. I'm gonna multiply that first number by two to get a 10 inch square. So that will be the size of my paper. So I'm gonna have to cut this 12 by 12 sheet down to 10 by 10. Okay, so then on this one, again, I'm gonna find my center. I didn't make you look sit through that. And so here are all my envelopes. And you can see when I put the card base there that there's just a ton of room with that scoring tool. And they're more square looking. I like the way it looks when I can kind of mess with my sizes and make it match the size of the envelope. So which one did you prefer? Here's some more envelopes I made just to give you some variety and see what it looks like. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you would hit the like button and let me know, give me a little love. And then also, if you would please subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos I make two per week. And if you want to be notified of when those videos come out, you can hit the notification bell and it will notify you as new content comes out. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.